I'm Jordan Belfort, and this is Sales School. NetSuite is the world's number one cloud business system. Bottom line, it gives you visibility and control over your financials, HR, inventory, e-commerce, and more. It's everything you need all in one place. In fact, over 21,000 companies are using NetSuite right now, so you'll be in great company right alongside them. So let NetSuite show you how they'll benefit your business with a free product tour at netsuite.com slash school. Hey, Jordan Belfort here, and welcome to Sales School, the place where you can hear from me every single day getting an awesome tip and insight into how you become a top producer, how you take your sales skills to the next level. And also, we are now calling in other top, well-respected sales experts from around the world because I want you to hear other people's perspectives as well. No one has a monopoly on great ideas. So, our guest today is... Keenan, the author of Gap Selling, someone I have a tremendous amount of respect for. Um, so Keenan, here's the deal. Very quickly here, I want you to give you like, I'm give you like five or six minutes to, to explain it, then we'll discuss it after. So you give me like your, your strategy and then you and I will debate it and I'll try to dig deeper into it. So what is that one special thing? I know you teach a lot of stuff. It's a, a great system you have, but what's the one thing you think that is the most important aspect of what you teach that could help people? Salespeople need to understand. It's really easy, dog. It's really easy. Salespeople need to understand the problems they solve. Too many salespeople understand all the shit their product does, right? My product does this. My product does that. It does this. It does that. It can accomplish this. It accomplish that. It has this benefit and that benefit. But when you really ask them, I mean, you should test. You should test people, Jordan. You should, like when you get people say, okay, what problem does your product solve? And they all answer it like this. Our product brings exceptional value, blah, blah, blah. Or our product does this and our product does that. Well, the minute right. does comes out of their mouth, that tells you what it's going to be in the future. It doesn't actually mention the problem that someone is struggling with now, right? Give me an example. Give me a good example. So of, of, of a company that you've worked with and the problem you solved. So most companies, when I work with them, they don't know the problems they solve. But like, for instance, I was working with a company just the other day, right? And they, they sell... Um, what do you call that stuff? Expense management, right? And and when I asked them, you know, what do you guys solve? And when I first got with them, they said, oh, we, 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 make, ex we make expense management easier, right? And I'm like, good for you, but that doesn't tell me what problem you solve. And after we spent a long time together, what we found out was one of the problems they solve is fraud and out of policy expense losses, uh, explain what that is just real quick. So fraud, what is that? So if you, if, when someone does, like we're in sales, right? And salespeople do their expense, their, um, their expenses and they turn them in, right? Hey, I spent, you know, $150 this month or $500 this month, $1,000 this month. And people use that for fraud, right? Or there's policies that what you're allowed to expense and not expense. Got it. Sure, right? got it. So the problem is that their product is solving, it's helping them, it's eliminating fraud or reducing fraud within a site. That's one problem. Okay. Yep, yep. So now given that, so that's one, let's say that's the problem. So how does that then translate into uh, a sales presence? So how do you use that in terms of as a salesperson to close the deal? Because think about it. The people who are going to buy your expense management system, they're not buying it because it's going to make expense management easier. What does that mean? Expense management easier. They're buying it because somewhere along the line, they wasted, depending on the size of the company, 100,000, 500,000, $3 million in fraudulent charges or out of, ex, out of policy expenses they, they didn't know about. So if you're a salesperson and rather than saying, hey, I'd like five minutes of your time to talk about how great our expense management system is, you take, get them to say, hey, look, I'd like to take five minutes of time to talk about if you're struggling with losing hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars to expense fraud and policy that you can't currently track. Now, which one of those do you think someone's going to want to give you time to talk about? <laughs> sure. So it's really about identifying what their highest level problem is and then showing how your product solves that problem. Yes. Right. Give me, let's use another example now of a different industry. A con, give me a more common industry that people like the average salesperson, like what's a good one like um, that, that you think the average salesperson could really understand here, like um, I mean, automobile sales. Like, what's the problem that you know? So, a customer walks in to buy a car, right? A customer walks in to buy a car. You're an automobile salesman. What's the typical? You know, obviously, I guess the first thing is you have to ask questions to find out what the problem yes. is, right? Yes, yes. So, depending on what car you sell, you should know what problems it solves. 
right? So I use this one a lot, right? I, I drive a, a, a all wheel drive larger truck because before I um, moved up to Vail, I used to live in Denver and we're a skiing family. I have a home up here, right? And so all my three of my kids competitively ski. And at the time they were younger, like, you know, five, six, seven, nine, or whatever it was. And so I needed something. The problem I had was one, my kids would be pains in the ass in the back seat, right? Two, they went, uh, they, I wanted a place to get comfortable and fall asleep on the way home because we came home late at night. Um, three, if you've ever been to Vail, it's a pretty steep pitch. And so if you got a, like a six cylinder engine or a piece of shit engine, it doesn't go very fast and I'm impatient. So I just want to get the fuck up the hill. You know what I'm saying? So the pro if I was buying a new car, the problem was space, speed up the hill, comfort, comfort for my kids, entertainment system, the back, that's stuff I wanted. But the problems I was having was not getting up the hills. Well, I also need something that was really good in four wheel because it would snow a lot. And if you can't get through that, you're hosed. So those are some of the problems I was personally having. Right. Here's a brilliant example. Do you remember the the um, the um, uh, what are those things that moms drive? Uh, SUVs? No, oh, the minivans. Minivans, minivans. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and the, a while back, they came out with one that had a vacuum in it that vacuumed up all the shit. That, remember that one? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So that's a problem. Like that's that's a product recognizing a problem. So if you came looking for a minivan, I might say you have young kids. You say yes. I say, do they spill shit all over the car and you constantly get having to get it dirty? They say yes. Let me show you this. The problem is we have a constant dirty car. The kids are making it a mess. And watch what I do even further. What do you do for work? I'm a realtor. Now you really need this vacuum because if you're a realtor and you drop your kids off at the daycare and the back of the car is a complete mess, you don't have time to go to a uh, uh, car wash. You want to take that sure. car and that's what I mean. You've got to sell to the problem, not the so Sure. So do you, what do you think the big mistake to, so that the average salesperson that doesn't understand this? So, so they typically end up focusing more on all the features and benefits of their product. And they almost, it's like a shotgun approach where hopefully that if they talk about enough features and benefits, one of them will hit that person's problem or pain point, right? Versus what you're saying is, is you want to first spend the time to essentially ferret out what that person's problem is, right? And then once you understand and then vice versa, um, I guess if, if you're, a, so there's two sides to it, right? So there's the, knowing the product that you're selling and I guess most products solve more than one problem. They might solve but a three or four. Bunch. They only solve a few because they were designed right? only to solve a few. Yeah, you're getting it. Yeah, baby. And then, and then the idea would be that, so if you're the salesperson, right? Then A, you need to know what problem or problems that your product or service solves. And then when you are introduced to a customer in a sales account, then you need to ask them questions to find out what their problems are and then where that match occurs and then focus on essentially filling. Is that what you're saying? Boom, boom, you did it. It's all you got. There we go. You're that's got right now. There you go. I've graduated, right? <laughs> so that's the essence of gap selling. So when you talk about gap selling, you mean finding the gap is in, define what the gap is. So the gap is the space between the current state where you are today and the future state where you want to go tomorrow. And what happens Got it. is the bigger the gap, the more you'll pay, right? So the more money you'll pay, the more you'll do because the change is so massive and because where you are today is so bad. Like a really cheesy short example is if I'm, if I'm driving home from playing basketball and I'm thirsty, right, I might take a minute to stop and spend three bucks on a thing of water, right? That is my current state is I played basketball, I'm thirsty. I could wait an extra 20 minutes to get home, but I'm thirsty enough. It's worth it. The gap is about this. It's worth it to stop. Now, if I'm in the desert, and I'm about to die, it's the same water, dog. Like, this is what people don't understand. It's the same fucking product. People do not get this through their head. But I'm about to die, and Jordan comes swooping in in a helicopter, and he's got a gallon of water. I'll, I'll give you everything I've got for that, because here I am today about to die, no water stuck in the desert. Here I am, a gallon of water and a chance to live a little longer, maybe get the rest of the way through the desert and live. That's a giant gap. Current state, future state. I will do whatever it takes to make that happen. And salespeople so don't is it, do that. Sure. Is it is part of how often do you think you have prospects that are almost in denial of their own gap? Where because they've been they've had this gap for so long where they've almost minimized it in their own mind. So part of the is part of the job of the salesperson to help the person realize the gap might be larger than they think it is or to help them identify gaps? Dude, 
fucking love guys like you. You get it right away. You get it. <laughs> it must be our East Coast thinking, right? I'm from Boston, Where are you from originally? Where are you from? from? Boston. From Boston. Got it. Got it. Yeah, cool. that's, okay. why, that's, why the, that's why the Patriots thing right there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, cool. Although they suck this year. It's a different story. But dude, you absolutely nailed it. I would say 99% of the time, they haven't really ferreted out and truly understand the size of the gap. What they know is something isn't working. It doesn't feel good. I don't want to do it any long. They have a handful of anecdotal stories of why they need to change. But when I get with them and I start digging in, 99% of the time, one or two things happen. Holy shit, this is way bigger than we thought. And, I, and the sale grows usually and gets bigger than it started. Sure. And it goes faster. Or I'm like, guys, I hear you, but you, you don't need this. Because like, I'm asking these, you don't need this. Go do this or don't do anything or make these two little tweaks, but you don't need what you think you need. And here's why. And the best part is every time the buyers agree with me, every single time Got the it. buyers agree with me. I'm never waiting for the buyer to figure out, do I need this? We, I get them there together. So even before I start pitching or selling, they've already determined if there's a problem and if they need to change or if not, then we talk about whether or not they should buy my shit or whatever else someone is selling. All right, listen, you don't need to tell me that running a business is hard work. But if you're still using QuickBooks and spreadsheets, chances are that you're making it far more difficult than it needs to be. And that's why it is time to upgrade now to NetSuite by Oracle. Stop paying for multiple systems. Don't give you the information you need when you need it. And ditch all those spreadsheets and old outdated software programs that you've outgrown and just upgrade now. NetSuite is the world's number one cloud business system. Bottom line, it gives you visibility and control over your financials, HR, inventory, e-commerce, and more. It's everything you need all in one place. Best of all, NetSuite is for everyone. Whether your business is doing a million dollars or a hundred million dollars a year, you're going to save a ton of money and a ton of time as well with NetSuite. In fact, over 21,000 companies are using NetSuite right now, so you'll be in great company right alongside them. So let NetSuite show you how they'll benefit your business with a free product tour at netsuite.com slash school. So, so you're looking at your problem as this, you look at your product as the solution to the problem. So it's really first step one is essentially finding out what their problem actually is, ferreting it out, making sure they're not in denial of that problem. They fully understand the ramifications, often expanding it even, right? Making sure they, right? And then once you have that, 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 that aspect completed, then it's about transitioning into the solution while you're, product, good or service represents the solution, the best solution, right? Yep. So what, what, what the, the slight thing in between there, and I think you're going to really appreciate it because I think you do it in, um, intuitively, is the reason I ferret out the problem and make it spell it out is then I say, okay, then basically I get them to say, we need to change, right? You, you can't get anybody to buy anything until they decide they want to change. As a matter of fact, mm -hmm. you really almost can't get anybody to make a decision, right? Until they decide they want to change, right? Whether it's whatever the decision is, You've got to want something different. That's the whole point of a decision, right? So when it comes to selling shit, the person has to say, you know what? You're right. I don't want to stay where I am anymore. Whether it's a pack of gum, whether it's going and buying a Red Bull, like it's like, I don't have one. I want one. Why do I want to change? What's going on? I'm tired. I got to, you know, I, I got to stay up late and do something. I got to watch the kids. Uh, I want to have lots of energy while I'm talking to Jordan. Like whatever the issue is, right? I got to decide where I'm at now isn't okay. And so what most salespeople try to do is they try to get the decision I need to change and I should buy your product at the same time. Mm. And that's why a lot of people say, yeah, you know, we decided to just to stay where we are. Like, you know, you, you lose to indecision or you lose to status quo. Sure. That's yeah. because and how do you, to do. and how do you get someone? So what you're saying is you want someone to basically say out loud and in some shape or form, like, you know what, you're right. I, I do have this issue and I really need to resolve it or change it. So you're trying to get that as an out loud statement or, or is it just sort of could be an understood or you want to get them to actually say it out loud? You get them to say it out loud. It doesn't always have to be, yes, I want to change. Right. In some shape or form or some, some sort of understanding. And, and, and what's, the, and how do you, is there some way that you recommend getting someone, if the goal is to get them to, you know, cause again, there's a, there's power 
in someone wanting to remain consistent with something they've said out loud, right? So, yeah, I mean, if you can get them to sort of say, you know what, you're right, I, I really got to do something about this. They're not going to say, well, I need to make a change. That's kind of, you know, rare. They'd say that, but they'll say, yeah, you're right. It's really, wow, you're right. This is a big issue. And yeah, I got to do something about this or something, right? So is there some methodology or, or, or is there any language pattern that you use that typically is like your go-to thing when you got someone close and you want to just you know, sum it all up so they kind of make that statement? Is there something that you do or does it just happen naturally in the sale? Well, for me, it happens naturally, and you just did it naturally, and you didn't even know it. I, ha- I after- no, I knew it. I did it. I did it. I did it on purpose. So, so I'm just saying. But like, but that's me. You know, what I'm saying. I'm talking. I think. I think what I find is that, like, obviously, for myself or for you, you know, I'm a natural born salesperson. You are too. So the idea is, many people aren't, and then the things that you and I take for granted can be very challenging for people, right? So I, so I, what I try to do always is, I try to make it so simple and sort of give them like at least some sort of go to way. Like, hey, okay, so if you want to get them to say that out loud, you know, here's a way you might do that without making it canned or ridiculous is there anything like that that you sort of could recommend as a go like, like you're su- it's almost like your summation you know what it is it's almost like you've done your job you ferreted out the problem it's very clear you want to kind of tie it off and then what does that let that transition to when you start talking about the product you you nailed it so let's just use jennifer i guess this would be in gender whatever but jennifer or tom has the um the the what's the thing called again the minivan Right. And I've come to the conclusion that I've found out that that, you know, Tom or, or Jennifer are um, they're just their career, st- their their real estate career is really starting to move. The kids are three, five and seven. They're still leaving a mess in the car. And about 50 or 60 percent of the time when they're about to go do a showing and they need to put people in their car, it's filled with all the crap and they don't have time and it's embarrassing. And it's happened X amount of times and they feel like they've lost at least one or two deals. They feel like their credibility as a realtor is shot. And then, I, and then they told me, because, and I said, what are the deals you think you lost? They said, well, I think I lost at least one high-end deal that would have been worth 15 or 20 grand to me in commission. I don't know for sure, but I feel that way. So they tell me all that. Then I take it back to my, I said, all right, so Jennifer, look, if I've heard you correctly, you're concerned that you're maybe losing deals because the car looks like crap. You've tried to get to the, the car wash, blah, blah, blah. And then, so it seems to me that this really is something that you need to make a change to or do something to solve this problem because you can't live with this problem anymore. I just, I just basically sum it up. And then, and, and they're going to say, yeah, exactly. And that's sort of like, right. So you're sort of, so what you're doing is you're essentially what you're doing is so, you know, tying it off is basically you're saying based on what you said to me, you know, I see this, this, and this, and it sounds to me like you, you know, in your position, you, I think you can, it, it seems pretty obvious. You need to make some sort of change. Does that sound right? Like that? Yeah. Something it's like, got, right? gotten to the end of the rope. You can't keep doing one of my favorites. You can't keep doing this anymore. Got it. Yeah. Perfect. You know All right, cool guys, listen. Too, Jordan? Oh, you know what's cool about this too? Notice in our whole conversation, I was never talking about the car. Or I was never like, right. it was, it was sure. never talking about that. That's the best part. <laughs> Keenan, how does people get in touch with you and find out more about your, your products and uh, your methodology? I, I am probably just as easy as you ought to find. You can go, you can search Keenan on Google. You can go to a salesguide.com or you can go gap selling. If you can't find me by typing in Keenan gap selling or sales guy on Google, find a different profession because you ain't going to be able to sell. <laughs> All right. Keenan, it was great talking to everyone. Everyone, Keenan, check his stuff out. Thanks for coming on Sales School, Keenan. Thanks, dog. I enjoyed it. Take care, bye.